this afternoon from Midland. Uh, he's got a malignant hypertension in his eyes, and he's probably going to have to have surgery. I had never heard of it, but I Googled it, and it affects his eyes as well as his kidneys, so we need to pray for him. Okay. And he has absolutely no relation to me, so don't hold that against him. Right? <laughs> he knows that please. <laughs> Tomorrow we take tra Travis and I go to Abilene for that uh, from his lungs, and they'll be checking out the all the knuckles. But that one that they say it does with malignant, we're praying that it's not going to be a problem. Be gone. So keep in prayer for him. <laughs> Okay. Everybody can hear me. I need to be I talked to I talked to Lily Dale today. Actually, I, I talked to her. She was on her way home. She was driving, and she said that uh, if she didn't get tired, she'd make it home tonight. But if she got tired, she's going to stop and she'd come in tomorrow. But she's okay. doing a whole lot better, and, and she got that big boot off, but she's still having trouble walking on it. But she, oh. said, she sends her love. Said it, tell everybody she loves me. We'll give her a try and mercy to be here. And the folks that are on the road with them. Sherry, Angie, and Brenda are also sick. I was going to ask where Brenda was in. Yeah, good. All of them are down. I bet I wrote we took uh, Tommy back to her doctor uh, yesterday. You know, I got one on. <laughs> She's already got one on. I got one on. Is it on? Is it on? It's, it's, on. Not, uh, it's not on. on. It's, it's down on. It's on. It's on. I got a blue light. Okay. <laughs> it's a Anyhow, we took her to the doctor for her results of her MRI. She does have a bulge disc and it's pinching one of her nerves, but it's not severe enough that they want to do surgery right now, so they're going to try to do, send her to a pain management doctor, maybe get a shot in her back, and see if we can't get some relief there uh, from that. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Good deal. Am I behind you on the Kansas? No, I'm not. Did y'all hear about the Kansas shooting? The Kansas shooting? No. Yeah, it was, it was, it was what you said, uh, like the trunk of the tree, like kind of big, so Halloween party, and one dead and several injured. Yes. I didn't, uh, Halloween party. Yeah. 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 Something wrong with the world when you've got a man and they kind of set for them. I mean, it's just too much of that. Yeah. Celebrating for kids. Yeah. yeah. That's, you know, my wife. That's a real soft spot of children. That's why she enjoys so much of the night being out here. Right. And she, you know, for any time you do something bad with a kid, she gets in the middle of it. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, uh, uh, Tina also, we, we spent the day in the middle of the doctors, her doctor, and uh, she, it was her, uh, uh, I forget what you call him. He's a psychiatrist, psychologist, or whatever. And uh, he said she was doing pretty good. She was yeah. trying to expect what she should expect. So, yeah. Amen. everything's like it's supposed to be, I guess. Good as it's going to be, I ain't worried about it. That's good. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Or steel guitar, whatever. Where do you go? There he is. We don't put him on prayer list. You got shoulder problems, you said? That's not a problem. It's hurt. Oh, well, that's the problem. It's hurt. I told you, it's 73 years old. Well, how old is he? 73? Yeah, he's 73. Right? 73 years old. I can understand. Yes, ma'am. I got one more. When we were at the doctor's office yesterday, yesterday, uh, there was a gentleman that asked for prayer for his wife. She's got cancer and she's pretty sick. Her name is Barbara Earp, as in Wyler. He it was actually the great great grandson of Wyler. So, but he's 
Please pray for her. Okay. We'll do that. Yes, sir. She got one month left till uh, she goes into the negative, so we can pray for her back. Uh oh. Yeah. 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 I just like to thank y'all. Y'all's church is so loving at the Halloween festival at the other day. We wanted to come. Thank you. We're glad to have you here. Yeah. Also, I'd like to say for your son, you know, eight days clean. Uh, I'm 37 days clean. I'm not alcohol, so God's good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, we don't expect to see you sitting there Sunday. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> Anybody else? Let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Lord, we are so thankful to be here today. You've given us an extremely beautiful day to be here. Lord, we thank you so much for what you've done for us in the last few days. Our uh, celebration on Monday was a complete success and Lord, I don't know about the rest of the people sitting in this building tonight, but I can feel your presence there through the whole entire deal. Uh, we know that you uh, laid your hand on us and gave us a good celebration and above all a safe and easy deal to do. And uh, we have we're having basically no problems. And Lord, we really thank you for that. Especially for the safety, as we mentioned a minute ago, uh, one celebration uh, had a uh, shooting in it. Lord, we ask that you be with those individuals that were involved in that. Amen. Guide them and help them uh, get through it. Lord, we ask that you be with the emergency responders for that incident. Guide them and give them the courage to keep doing their job and doing what they're doing there. Uh, they are extremely important to our civilization. Lord, we uh, ask that you God, Brother James, in our message tonight and our Bible study, be with us through the rest of this afternoon. We come back again on the Sabbath to worship once again. Lord, I ask you to forgive us for sins and shortcomings. Be with us throughout. I ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. I've heard two different how many women for the rest of the month. Oh, wow. How many? 22? I didn't see that many cars here. Uh, there weren't that many cars here.
one of the beloved disciples, one that he uh, cherished very much and that loved Jesus, and one that never left him, never forsook him, and he knew by his experience of being with him that he would be the one that would be most likely to take care of his mother the way he wanted her taken care of. So, who are the brothers of Jesus? Matthew chapter number 13 gives us the answer to that. And it lays it out real plain so that we're not uh, in verse 55 and verse 56. Uh, the easiest way to you know, do something like that, if you got a question, is to answer it with scripture. So if, you buy, so if you back up a statement with scripture, then there's no controversy. Oh, at all. If it's a controversy, after you back it up with scripture, it's not God's fault, it's your fault. Amen. So, verse 55 says, It is not this the carpenter's son. It is not this his mother called to marry. And his brethren, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. And his sisters, as are not uh, all of us, went to have this man, all of these. So, we don't, the Bible does not say how many sisters he had or did not bother to give their name. Uh, I've never understood that, but, you know, I don't understand a lot of things that God does. <laughs> and it's like, I don't understand why he called me a priest, but uh, a little longer than anything else that he does. But, we do know that he, his brother's name was John. Now, the Hebrew had a different name for John. Or James, I'm sorry, not John. His, his, the Hebrew name for James was Jacob, or Joseph, or Joseph, named after his father. And then you've got, you've got the other ones that are lined out, and you've got uh, Simon, and that's where he, uh, Joseph and Simon and Judah, he had a nickname of Jew. Now, some of the Bible scholars, I was looking through some of the literature today in my uh, library, and some of the Bible scholars believe that he wrote the book of Jude. And if you know, how many know what the book of Jude is? How far? Back from the very beginning of, of the New Testament. It's huh? It's just before the last book yes. of the Bible. I mean, right in that area. One or two books before the end of the Bible. So, there's a question that's always been was he old enough to wrote that book and still be a disciple of Jesus? Well, none of the disciples, no matter who they are, were given any kind of aid. We don't know when they started following Jesus. We don't know if they did it at a when they were in their twenties or in their thirties or what what time they started following. But we know that they that he chose those twelve disciples. And even when he chose the twelve disciples, he knew that one of them was going to be the one that betrayed him. Now Judas is not the same Judas that one of his brothers. You've got to remember in the Bible there are a lot of different names for different people. Just because it's kind of like in our, our society today. Uh, how many donkeys we got in here today? You know? Uh, <laughs> If, if you, you have different names and you run across somebody that has a, the same name as you have, uh, somewhere down the line. Because I guess there's just so many. Now, nowadays, a lot of the, the new babies that are being born, they got away from that tradition. If you've got any grandkids with some weird names, uh, uh, it, you can't do that. But either way, we find that. We, when we run across these people, like the John, a lot of people mistaken the John that he turned 
his mother offered to and to care for her was John the Baptist. So John and John the Baptist were two different people. Now John the Baptist was a cousin of Jesus. His, his mother's name was Elizabeth. And if you remember the story, when Jesus was, uh, uh, when Mary was conceived and when she was in childbirth, she visited uh, Elizabeth. And the Bible said that John the Baptist, and that Elizabeth was, was with child at the same time. And when Jesus, when Mary came in, John the Baptist sleeped in his mother's womb because even though he was not born, I think he could sit the presence of God in his life. And he later became the one that had the privilege. Uh, I wish I'd had that privilege, but he, I didn't, to baptize Jesus and uh, start his earthly ministry for the last three and a half years of his life. So we got chapter 19. We went through what Jesus went through on the cross that day. <coughs> the death that he that he that was laid upon him for mine and your sin and for our forgiveness. And we see that the very last thing that happened to him was that they went around and they were going to break the leg of every of the ones that were on the cross, the two thieves that were hanging on either side of him. And they broke the two that was on each, either side of him. And when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, and they broke not his leg. Now, you say, well, you know, that, that was just being a little sentimental or, or really sorry for him or whatever. No. Ezekiel and several other places in the Word of God told us that not a bone would be broken in his body. So all they were doing was fulfilling Scripture. Even though they thought they were doing something good, but one soldier did. And I, I loved it. You, know, you, may, you may think this is humane, but I, I loved it. He took a sword, a spear, and he pierced his side so that the water and the blood were drawn from his body. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that blood was shed that day on the Amen. So that blood has covered me, covered my sin, and gave me what I have today, and gave me a home that I can look forward to going to one day. So he asked me to give us a faith. Amen. Even though it sounds a little cruel, uh, what he did to me. But, so we got to that point. Now he cried out in verse 30 in his being. Then we come to verse number 38, what we're going to take our, uh, what we're going to pick up tonight. Verse number 38, Jesus had been, had died, he'd given up the ghost, and now come time for burial. Now come time for burial. Verse number 38, and after this, Joseph, the Ammonite, began, uh, as a disciple of Jesus, but secretly of the fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. And he came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which is the first come to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of mar and aloe at about a hundred pounds weight. And he took the died the body of Jesus and wounded it, wound it, he wound it in linen clothing and, and in spices in the manner of the Jews to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified, there is a garden. And in that garden a new sepulchre wherein no man had been laid. There lay they Jesus, 
Therefore, because the Jews, preparation day, or was preparing a preparation, preparation for the, the day of the set second of the night at hand. <coughs> so they were getting ready for the Passover, and it was wrong for them to leave anyone on the cross during Passover. So they took, they wanted him off, and he, they went to Pilate, and you remember Pilate was a really fault for Jesus not to be put on the cross. So when the disciples went to him and asked him, can I take the body of Jesus and, and bury it? Then Pilate gladly told him yes. But he had to go to him by fear of the Jews. Now why was, why was he afraid of the Jews? Why was he afraid to go and take the body of Jesus and not let anybody know about it? Well, if you remember the scripture, it's because the Jews were afraid that somebody was going to steal the body and then they were going to testify that Jesus had rose. So they were very protective and guarding the body of Jesus because they didn't want nobody to know and for them to testify that he had risen. For he is going to rise in the scripture, but they didn't want any false doctrine because Jesus told them in the scripture, I'll be three days in the heart of the earth and then I'm on the third day I will rise again. And so they were afraid that they he would, might, they might, the disciples might take him away and then secretly tell him that he arose from the grave. So they went and they took his body and they laid it, but you know, it, it's strange. The man that came to him and covered his body with spices like was tradition of that day. You know, we, we do embalming today. That was their form of embalming. They would take a person and they would just cover them with spices and then wrap them like a mummy in grave clothing. And that way they would they could put them in a grave and they wouldn't smell. That was a big reason. Because if you ever smelled a decayed body, you'd understand what I'm talking about. You guys have been in law enforcement, you'll understand what I'm saying. It's not a, it's a, it's a smell unlike anyone, anything you've ever smelled before in your life. And it's unique in its smell. So, Nicodemus came to him. Now, Nicodemus, there's a whole other story of how Nicodemus got it. You'll remember the story. Uh, he was led to the Lord while he was lost and undone without Christ, didn't know who Jesus was. And there was a little guy that came to him and told him about Jesus. Now Nicodemus came to him by night and he said, Lord, what must I do to be saved? And they told him how to get saved. And he accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. He was a very high ruler in the power and in relationship to uh, the king. And so he didn't want to make that public, but he came forth out of love and showing back what God had given him in his salvation. Now he's giving it back to him by trying to take care of his body and protect it. So he brought the, the stuff and he covered him and then they wrapped him in the clothing. And they laid Jesus in a barred tomb. Then where no man had ever been. It's important that Jesus never used anything new. Because if something would have happened 
they would have said, well, somebody else has already been there. They, they, did, they came in and they're the ones that undid all this or whatever. So they put in the mark and didn't belong to a very influential high, I guess you call it high society man. And he allowed Jesus to be buried in his tomb. I believe he knew from the scripture and from Jesus' testimony that he was just going far. He wasn't going to be there permanently. Amen. And the Jews were very, uh, I guess, not protected. I'm getting into a complete different story than what the Matthew talked about, but it ties in, I think, with what we're talking about tonight. <coughs> they rolled a big stone in front of that tomb. And then they placed the Roman seal on that on that uh, stone that they rolled in front of it. And then they put two guards to guard it because they were so afraid the disciples were going to come and steal it out of that grave and then tell everybody that he rose. Chapter number 20. And on the first day of the week came Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, seeing the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Now when she arrived, the stone had already been moved. Who moved the stone? James. God. God moved the stone. The two guards, the Bible said, became as dead men. In other words, when you have the Spirit of God moving in somebody's life, there's some things that changes in your in your way of thinking and your way of doing. And these two men was, thought they saw ghosts, and they scared them nearly to death. And so they were there, but when Mary came, the stone had already been rolled away. When it was yet dark. Unto the sepulchre, seeing the stone taken away from the sepulchre, she ran and came unto Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. So she suspected that somebody had stolen the body of Jesus. So she came and got the other disciple. And Peter, therefore, went forth with the other disciples, and he came to the sepulchre. So he ran both together, the other disciples did out, excuse me, get my paper right here. They outran Peter. We had a foot race now, <laughs> because they were wanting to see what happened. They saw Jesus put in the tomb. They saw the stone rolled in front of it. They saw the guard, they saw the seal, and then here comes Mary, and she runs back and tells them, hey, the stone has been moved. Well, you know, the first thing that would enter my mind is you got to be kidding me. Woman, what have you been drinking? <laughs> that, you know how big that stone is? It would take a lot of people to move that stone. And she said, I don't care. Stone had been rolled up. Now Mary at that point had never went inside the tomb to see whether or not Jesus was even going really to She just noticed the stone being rolled. So she, her thought was she was in fright that somebody had stole the body of Jesus. So she ran to get to the disciples. And now the foot race is over and on, and they all outran Peter. And came and they came first to the sepulchre. And he stood down, Peter, I mean, I'm sorry, let me, let me rephrase that a little bit. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter and, and, and came first to the sepulchre. And he stood down and looked in and saw the linen clothing lying, yet went he not in. So he just went in to take Peter. 
the three were not filled back in there. And the body was not there, but the linen clothes, clothing, or the, the clothing that they had wrapped Jesus in, was there. But he didn't go in. Uh, here, buddy, kind of confused. He wasn't real sure what was going on. Then came Simon Peter. He finally arrived on the scene. And he followed him and went into the sepulchre and seeing the linen clothes lying, <coughs> and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothing, but wrapped together in a plate by itself. Now, for a long time in my early <coughs> ministry, I read about that first scripture and never even thought of it. Until I learned what the meaning of that napkin was. The napkin was what well, they placed over his, his face, and it was folded nice and neat, and it was laying at the end of the, the bed, and the rest of his clothes was laying over here. So I learned in my, after a while, that that napkin had a significant meaning. If you went into a nice restaurant, that actually had linen, not paper towels or, or Kleenexes or whatever you want to call them, but it had the regular uh, cloth napkin. If you were through with your meal and you were leaving, you would wipe up your napkin and you would just put it in and leave. But if you had to go to the little room down the hall, or an anchor bomb or something like that, and you were not through, you would fold that napkin and lay it beside of your plate. That told the waiter that you were not through, that you were coming back, and you were going to be back in that plate. That's exactly what it meant for us, that he was not going to stay there, but he was coming back to take you and I home to be with him. Yes, yes. So it has a very significant meaning. And I'm glad. I'm glad for that napkin. Amen. I'm glad that he folded it and left it laying there. <coughs> oh, I can I can get excited here tonight. I, I'll try to hold my I'll try to hold my thing. <laughs> she has a hard time keeping up with me anyhow. <laughs> then in also verse number eight. Also there were other disciples which came first to the sepulchre, and they saw and they believed. For as yet they knew not the scriptures that it might that the heat must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre, and weeping, and she wept, and she stood and stooped down. And looked into the set. So finally, after Simon going in and testifying that he was not there, seeing the proof that he was no longer there, she finally got the nerve up enough to go in for herself to see. Mary, this is not this is not Jesus' mother. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. It's very magnificent. One that loved Jesus because Jesus had won her to the Lord um, one day and gave her a new life and a new beginning. And she followed Jesus from that day forward. She loved Jesus. So she was laying, she was weeping. And she finally stooped down and she looked <coughs> into the successful. And seeing two angels. Sitting uh, in, in white, sitting the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had laid. Now she saw something the disciples didn't see. When they went in there, the angels wasn't there. You see, God sent those angels just for Mary's sake, showing to her that He loved her as much as she loved him. And so these two angels 
we're standing at. Or one sitting at the head, and one sitting at the feet. And they, and they said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? So they wanted to know why she was crying. Why she was upset. And she said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord. And I know not where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing there. And knowing not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Who speaketh thou? She has supposed him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast bore him in, Tell me, from whence thou hast laid him, that I will take him away. And Jesus said unto her, Mary, as soon as he spoke her name, Mary knew who he was. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that Jesus knows us by our name. Amen. Amen. That's how personal Jesus is in our lives. He loved us. He saved us. But he knows everything about us. The right. Bible even says he knows all the number of the hair that are on your head. And for some of you, you don't have to know a lot. That's <laughs> right. Not calling any names or <laughs> Jesus said unto her, Mary, and she turned herself and said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, Man. Then Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. Now, why did Jesus tell her, Touch me not? Come back next Wednesday night and we'll find out. Let's say <laughs> So good to have all of you here tonight. Bishop, we want you to know what a privilege it was to have you in the service today. And I hope you enjoyed the jamboree. And our folks will be back on Sunday morning and they do they do a prayer for song on Sunday morning before we have a prayer for service. And so you got some more of that to look forward to when you come back. And so we enjoyed having you tonight. All right, let's start with the extension for prayer. Our Father, we thank you so much for your blessing. Lord, I thank you for knowing that one day you're going to come again. So, Lord, I just thank you for what you've done for, in our life. Thank you most of all for saving our souls. And Lord, writing our name down in that man's book of life. So Lord, I just ask you to go with us throughout the remaining part of this week. Bring us all back to thy house this coming Lord's Day. Because it's in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.